This will be a place where your goodness resides on earth as it is in heaven. We thank you for giving us the gift of living together in such a wonderfully unique mix of land, nature, water, and people. It truly is a gift from you. And we want to be grateful for that means. We thank you for seeing us both individually and corporately through one of the most challenging times in our world's recent history. We confess we have not lived to your standards. We have all not treated our neighbors how we want to be treated. There are times in recent months that we have not lived out Jesus' words in Matthew 22, where he summarized what our two goals in life should be, to love God and love others. Please forgive us, encourage us to love one another, and to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and be slow to anger. God, we ask that you would guide us into wise decisions, decisions that are not only wise for the present, but also consider future generations of the neighborhood and neighbors in Chandler's Landing. That out of hearts of gratitude, we would plan well for the future so that others will also be able to experience the unique blessings of living on the special patch of earth. And for those that don't see it, the blessing that it truly is, we ask that their eyes and hearts would be open to it, to see it afresh, to see it afresh, realizing that they could have been born anywhere in the world with wildly different socioeconomic, political, and financial settings, but yet they were not, and they find themselves here at the edge of water and land with more amenities than most in the world, surrounded by beauty of your nature. Help move their hearts toward thankfulness. Regardless of what anyone believes, we ask you that you, that we can <clears throat> at least all agree that it's better to live well together in peace and harmony, especially in a time when there's so much hate and chaos in the world that surrounds us. It's in your only begotten son's name, Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So we'll call the meeting to order at 10.05. Mr. Vice President, do we have a quorum? I do. All right. And we will go ahead and open and uh, move towards ratification of electronic votes. Uh, we had a vote made on June the 4th of 2021 uh, for approving the May board meeting minutes. I'll uh, move to approve those minutes. Okay. Okay. We got Karen second. Everyone in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Uh, we also had an e vote made on June 7th, approving an updated appraisal to be completed on uh, the October. I'll move to approve that electronically. Okay. All second. Okay, we got Randy second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right. That takes us into our own official <coughs> form. Here we are. Here you are. <laughs> If you have anything to say, please state your name and address. Laura Harris, not in Trenton, and I just have positive to say again, thank you, Chaz, and your team. It's very noticeable. The changes up here, the extra effort um, by your staff to ensure that they are taking care of and other guests, not just us, but it's very noticeable. And I just want to say thank you. Well, <laughs> hi Pat. I don't think you're yes. <laughs> <laughs> I only think about the menu, food menu. Thursday, taco night. <coughs> we get it back. We get it back every time. I come here every Thursday. <clears throat> so, and I heard it from other people. Y'all need to look at it. Okay. Is there uh Y'all took Friday night steakhouse. Is there a replacement to it? Yeah. Like what? It's so, what it's supposed to be. Well, we haven't come up exactly with what it was. It's something I'm going to address a little bit later in my notes for y'all. It's something we're going to look into as a chef special, rotating through steak items, fish items, potentially vegetarian items, pasta items, um, and just try to shake up something different, something new that fits within our confines of our rising costs of, of goods sold. Uh, I'm talking for the something for the residents. 
Correct. Because last night I was at a party or hamburger deal. It was not a party. Too many good questions. Too many good questions. About the hamburgers? <laughs> hamburger was great. No, about the heat. <laughs> about the heat. <laughs> Hamm- I mean, he did a great job. Lots of people. It was, uh, only thing I see upstairs is lots of new girls standing around. Well, they were all working last night, I can tell you that. I saw the same thing. Yeah. Oh. And we're also in a pretty heavy training phase as we get staffed up to all through the summer. Uh, we'll probably see less of them as we exit the training phase, but also mm-hmm. part of our end game goal is to get everyone trained and ready so that when we have today, for example, two banquet events, that doesn't interfere with the ability to operate the restaurant in the past day. That's, that's very good. Uh, we ordered eight last good. night at nine thirty. I was just telling but, you that, and they weren't. They were gonna be gone, and then they did it, and the whole bar had to restart. So, but I, I, I guess I'm. But I hear you about. I hear you about taco night. That's something. That's something I need to address yeah. with chef. And Friday night, and <laughs> we got new wine. I mean, I don't care for that, but other people do. But the food, the food is not. I'm sorry. We had brisket last night. You know, you know what? The, yes, you know what the problem is. It's no consistency. One time it's great, and then next time you get it, it's a flop. Well, I think you got to give Charles some time to get in here and fix some things. <laughs> I mean, he just got here. Really, he uh, it's, it's not tired. nothing against it. No, I, I know. Don't I know. We, if we appreciate your comments, I mean, it's just, just how long is going to, to take. Yeah. Here's the deal I've eaten the same fish for the last for the last month every Friday night. Hang, hang on, I let you talk. Let me talk. Sure, I'm, not okay. saying that they- I'm just saying it, it's been great. I mean, my wife has eaten two different variations of whatever she eats on Friday night for the last month. It's been great. Maybe I decided to switch so, from tacos. Yeah. Yes, okay. Well, but I mean, I, I hear your concern and I definitely want to address it that we want to focus on consistency in our kitchen, that every meal, every day is coming out exactly as we had at the greatest time, not the worst. And also what we're going to be able to do to elevate taco night and also focus on Friday night specials and something okay. to bring to the table. Uh, why they close kitchen at 9.30? Well, by the time orders go in at 9.30, by 9.45, all the food is coming out. That gives 15 minutes for cleanup and it allows our kitchen to leave. Well, uh, Saves on labor too. Okay, Correct. but, but uh, don't you think that time. we don't have enough hours open this place? So I would, I would say that yes, everyone wants it to be open more, but we also want it to o- operate responsibly and part of that right now is managing our labor costs because it's very expensive and the kitchen side specifically is very very expensive and so it's that balance now as things continue to progress and improve i and people are aware that hey there's good things going on here and people are coming back down here i I was here two nights this week and it was packed both nights so that's good to see that trend plus having events so all of that coming together, I think we're headed in the right direction on on that. And then Charles and his team will make the improvements they need by listening to feedback from um, residents. Keep my fingers yeah. crossed, but the residents, you have lots of events from the outside people. That's what pay for. I know, but still, you have to consider people living in here. Not, not because that might phase out, but the people are living here and paying for it. Sure. Sure. And we had a wonderful, so, wonderful farewell to Jenny, and I can't remember his name. Yeah. Hill. Yeah. Um, I was there. I know. Yeah. And that was a great, great community okay. event. And I'm seeing Wednesday nights really yeah. pick up. Yeah. Right. The wine time. But, you know, to fit, to fit uh, a baby shower up here from people that are outside the community when there isn't anybody in the community that's jumping to be here at 11 a.m., they're paying good money to come in and get the food and get the experience and all I, that. On the off times, right? Everything that that's good, but still the residents are great. Okay, so good. Got uh, it. Thank you very much. Well, the summer uh, hours still remain as they are now. I think probably for now. So, okay. so right now, yes, but we're also looking. Yeah, I guess I'll say what I have to say. But um, 
for right now, they're looking to remain the same. As we get trained up and staffed up, there have been talks of opening maybe the bar on Tuesdays and not doing the kitchen. Again, labor, kitchen labor is 10 times more expensive than running house labor. So, but I really want to hear from you guys if you'd like it to be open, then we can, but we can't always expect profitability if we're going to open and not do the numbers we thought we were going to do. Right. So it almost kind of has to be that double-edged sword of if we're going to open, we need to make enough money to pay for the people that we bring on as a staff level and we being the whole community and the restaurant but then also pay for all the goods that we sold and edge out a profit all in and not open at a loss just to open because that's just, I was just wondering out. because the pool is right a lot busier this mm -hmm. year and yes thank you it's really nice to come up grab even if it's a bottle right you know and go Sure. Sure. No, and that's it's a convenience thing, but I understand the cost thing as well. Right. Sure. But I mean, like opening the lounge on a Saturday morning as opposed to just doing Saturday nights. That's mm -hmm. something we can open into for every major holiday for Fourth of July, Father's Day, just like we did for Memorial Day. We're going to be opening the lounge. We were Danielle's already rented a margarita machine because that was a pretty big success with the community. I think if we market it, <laughs> imagine that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Imagine that. And if we market it and do even a better job, <laughs> then that is. Definitely something I foresee being an easy point of access. We've discussed how we're going to try to get the snack bar open. It's a mess. So right now that's on the radar, but it's going to be pretty tricky to execute by like August. Right. Just to get it organized, fixed up, and then also get it certified to be open. That's the other part too. Uh, this it has to be. It has, it has, it has to have a separate, oh, separate. Okay. Yeah. fridge. Yeah. yeah, it's got to be exactly. It doesn't. <clears throat> <laughs> right now, well, no. If you're going to operate food and sell food out of it, it's got to be certified through our health, you know, health yeah. inspector and like board and all okay. that. Okay, I stuff. just wondered. Yeah, yeah. but right now, walking up and there. grabbing things from the lounge and taking them into the pool or going upstairs and taking them to the pool, that's absolutely within the confines of what we're trying to do in building the okay. infrastructure. Um, cool. Anybody else? But I appreciate your feedback. Thank you. I'll do my best to. Explore the menu more, maybe. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Lord. Okay. All right. So that will move us into our reporting section. We'll have another uh, owner visitor forum at the end. Um, we've been working on uh, Northgate. Chip and I spent about an hour and a half at the Northgate uh, one morning, and about half of the people that turned in there had to then go around. So we got to witness kind of the cluster that that is. And so we also identified that there's approximately 13 or 14 signs all within that one area, which is not good, too much information. And so we are moving to simplify yeah, too much of the wrong and too much of the wrong information. So we're moving to simplify that. Um, <clears throat> a big part of the problem has been that people, as they're getting up to it, they get in that turning lane and then they're already in the lane and then other people pull up beside them on the left-hand side, which is the far right lane of Ridge Road. And they're already kind of trapped in there. So we're actually talking about putting a leading sign before that turning lane that, that already says, this is residence only, and that the main gate is three quarters of a mile ahead, and <laughs> the uh, heavy load gate or deliver gate is a half a mile ahead. Start trying to help that. And it's gonna be fairly large, five foot by three foot. Uh, you yeah. know, it says residence only. Oh yeah, well that's the thing. It, but it, it does, and it oh, does. That, that you, yeah, it, it, it's going to be much more clearly defined because then we'll have a two foot uh, tall but five foot wide section that says residents only. And then actually on the building, it's going to have a three foot by five foot that says residents only. So there'll be multiple places with also, with also directions for anyone to move forward towards the main gate and the delivery gate. So we're thinking that's going to clear up a lot of the confusion. Some of it is, is still being driven by uh, not being able to change on Google the, yes. the specific directions. It sends a lot of contractors there. And so we're going to do our best to, to help that, that issue. Um, so that should be happening within the next two to three weeks. Signs have already been worked and they'll have to be installed. Uh, we're also cleaning up when you're leaving the North Gate and you look to the left down Ridge Road. There was a number of trees from on our side of the fence that had kind of come down and were hanging low into the visibility. And so we're also trimming those up so that there's better visibility. We just want it to be safe 
and also more clear so that we can have less uh, uh, false starts as far as getting into the neighborhood. So um, that's one thing. Uh, well, yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> Is that like all the streets? I mean, that, that so, like, so when we were there, there, yeah, when we were there, it partially worked, uh, and then it didn't, and then it partially worked again. I think we also need to be careful on LEDs. They put out certain frequencies that interfere with the other frequencies. <laughs> if anyone's ever installed an LED light in your uh, uh, garage uh, up in, in the, uh, the motor uh, and has experienced the fact that it doesn't work after that, that's why. Because it's a frequency thing. So, uh, and along those lines, we're, we're in the middle of uh, working out actually um, replacing uh, gate controls uh, at the North Gate and other places. So, we're just in the process of getting all that worked out and getting kids on that. So, they're, they need to be replaced. And when we do that, some of these issues will. Yeah. My other part of my report is on the kits. Um, I hopefully you saw some the some of you or all of you saw the posts that we put out on Town Square. We've already had some issues early on. This is normal. Uh, every summer it gets like this. I think this summer is going to be even a little bit more unique because we're coming off of uh, a pandemic school year um, that is just kind of messed with everyone's normal routines and whatnot. So. Uh, but we really do want safe. We want kids to have fun time, but we also don't want them to destroy property, hurt themselves, or hurt others. Golf carts are the biggest concern, uh, or one of the biggest concerns right now, um, because that that can get someone killed pretty pretty quick, and that would not be worth it at all. Um, in Chandler's, we have the ability to let kids that are early, uh, younger than 16 drive golf carts, but there are rules associated with that. Well, the, the, all the kids that are 15 and under have to be approved, uh, have to go through a safety uh, test, and uh, have to be approved by the HOA office. That needs to happen. All golf carts need to be properly identified with uh, the numbering system. Um, 12 to 14 can drive the cart with a parent, just as a reminder. 15 can drive the cart without a parent. But they do still have to have their their ID. After you're 16, most people have a license, and that's what allows pretty much anyone else to, to be good on that, that front without having to do the test. So, um, where do you take the test? Do, do Curious, I, where do you take the test? At the HOA office, yeah. and there is um, it's a there's a 45 minute training video uh, that's <coughs> on YouTube on the Chandler's Landing uh, YouTube page. Uh, and so everyone can they can watch that. My twelve year old watched it when she like the day she turned twelve, uh, and and she was really ready. And and it's a cool opportunity to do this. I'm looking at it as a father. There's so many benefits that Chambers has. One of the other benefits is to learn how to drive safe, so that when she's 16, she's not starting there. She already has a really good handle because if we can make them safe drivers when they're young then it's going to be a lot better and a lot safer for them and others around them uh, when they start driving real car. So it's it's an additional opportunity and benefit we have here, but it needs to be properly handled. We get a lot, or, or security gets a lot of comments of, um, I don't care about your rules. I can let my kid do whatever they want. And that doesn't fly, and that's going to end up in people getting fined or having golf cart um, uh, revoked. So, um, we don't want to go down that path, but we also want to make sure that everyone's safe. So I can tell you that I've been cut off by a kid just about a month ago, uh, going down to Courageous. Literally, we, we were on the side and he pulled up next to us and was kind of going the same speed and then intentionally took a right turn. I had to slam on the brakes. I had four kids. One of them nearly got thrown out of the car. So we have kids doing dumb things in cars as well. So just, I would just implore everyone to talk to their kids and let's be friendly and neighborly uh, to, to all in, in this community. So, yes. Can we talk about the heavy load gate again? Yeah, so heavy load gate is part of uh, what we're doing at the North Gate as well. That sign's been out there for so long. Uh, it's a little bit dippy and maybe not um, specific enough. That sign is also getting replaced uh, with some iconography on it that shows a truck. But heavy load gate 
makes sense to some, but it doesn't make sense to others. And so we're going more for a delivery slash heavy load gate. Okay. I specifically want to talk about people utilizing it as they leave here that are heavy load. There's residents going out that gate at all hours in the morning, and the residents are getting upset. The ones that live across the street from it, because it's waking them up. They're going, they're trying to utilize that. And they don't maybe necessarily even live in this community. Okay. So we need to do something. We can put a sign have, on the on the back side of it as well. Uh, on the inside. Yeah, saying the, not at not an exit. Okay. And is there a way to turn it off that they can't get out? Or is it a yeah. is it a word that, that we have to allow it? It's a weight. It, it is it's a, difficult to turn it off. Okay. So could we put a barricade? Like a little barricade that will not let cars go off that way. Possibly. Possibly. Like, you know, at midnight or, or yeah. you know, I mean, just a reasonable hour because we're talking about people going out of that gate at two or in the morning is what the reports are getting. So yeah. it's yeah. just something that we, we really need to kind of help and scare yeah. them. We want them to go through the gates that are being filmed anyway, right? right. Yes. So we don't want them to well, go out there, the there is There is a camera. It is. Okay. But We'll take a look at it okay. to see. It, okay. it can be disabled, but that causes other. Okay, if we could just help them out, it's been going on for a while now. So, okay. Well, we got it on the notes. Um, all right. <clears throat> Next, we're going to uh, permit me um, to go ahead and move towards Kimber to get him off onto it today, uh, Charles. So, you don't mind getting here. Sure. No, thank you. Um, again, just thanks to the community for the overwhelming open arms and open minds that y'all have had since I've been here. Uh, you know, just crossed one month, and I remember sitting here on my fifth day in this boardroom doing this last meeting. Uh, so already the feedback we've gotten has been overwhelmingly pretty successful, and I'll share some of those notes. Obviously, opportunities are going to exist anytime you open the door to the public to come in and, and look at what you're doing and, and provide feedback. But we really do want to do what's in the best mind and interest for our community, um, not only from a profitability standpoint, but also, I mean, this is one of the best amenities that any community has is the ability to come in. And we have the idea of making it a profitable amenity to help pay for other set of amenities like the tennis courts, the pools, the other places that actually cost money. Um, so diving into it a little bit, uh, thanks to Danielle and her team, the banquets group uh, outperformed their budgeted revenue. Uh, restaurant pace increased exponentially from the beginning of the summer. Um, we actually outperformed by $11,000, which is a really solid result given the semi poor weather we've had and uh, the amount of events that we've kind of had tucked in that closed the patio or closed the lounge. Uh, but to even see restaurant revenue, that means upstairs and within the lounge growing by $11,000 over what we predicted. Uh, it's just that, again, thanks to the team, but also thanks to all of you for showing out and supporting us. Um, we're finally in a pretty good place, as you can tell by all the new faces uh, hanging around, to be in a pretty solid point with front of house staffing to not let banquet events interfere with restaurant events anymore. Um, we've had that issue in the past where we had to close certain segments because we had to use staff from one area to support in another area. Um, now we're kind of building a separate banquet team between uh, Danielle and Jennifer, who's our banquet coordinator, if you all haven't met her, and their banquet service team, who generally dress in all black. You'll see them upstairs doing an event up there tonight, as well as a wedding in the lounge tonight. Um, we're in the process of still developing a training binder that's gonna be on par with, I would say, a corporate restaurant training binder derived from a lot of ideas um, around pretty successful people, myself, Executive chef Danielle, uh, who have all come from pretty large corporate companies, to fit and build the training materials that will stand year over year as the baseline for any new hires in the many summers and winters to come as TYC operates into this next phase. So I think that's going to be pretty cool and important, and I'm happy to share uh, some of those ideas as well as take feedback on, on training notes from those of you that have trained uh, restaurant personnel or even just customer service staff in general. Um, Obviously, you all saw some Kemper sports faces here. So Val uh, D'Souza and also Joe DiMeglio came in to help support me this last month and help me get up to speed as well as kind of gain an understanding on what TYC is and where we're trying to go in the future. So a big shout out and thanks to them 
the next objective is to get the kitchen fully staffed up and that's kind of maybe where some of those food quality issues do arise from it's the same five guys or six girl five or six guys and girls are running the same shifts every single day so as we look to do what we've done up front somewhat in the back you'll alleviate and hopefully eliminate all overtime uh, which is a large expense and any additional hours that you do open and operate kind of increase that potential for overtime um, again which is a time and a half pay on anybody's current standing wage so as we staff up back there and provide the right training and support we'll be able to eliminate that from a financial standpoint as well as give some better quality of life to members uh, food cost of goods sold came in lower than expected, despite the rising cost on produce and meat. That was actually in thanks to somewhat doing some selective cutting on some menu items. Um, like no steak knife is a huge hit, but as the price of beef grew, rose as fast as it did from a purchasing standpoint, it fiscally didn't make sense to lose five or four or five dollars on every plate that we were selling out of the kitchen on Friday night. Um, again, all in the idea of profitability, but to your point, looking to do some things on Friday night that offer a creative solution, an elevated solution, and an idea that's maybe outside the box, um, which is also why we brought in Sean, who I think some of you have had the pleasure of meeting. He'll be working with Chef Hillary as our kitchen manager and sous chef and banquet coordinator uh, to bring some life and <clears throat> some really fun and free choices uh, once he gets the banquet program a little more situated. Um, Overall, we came very close to hitting our goal. We did come in over budget on our operating labor expenses, but that was due in part to some one-time, one-off expenses. Uh, we had to renew our TABC permit, which is a $3,700 hit that we generally amortize over the course of the year, as opposed to just taking it in one lump sum. But we didn't have that choice. We had to pay our permit uh, because that's kind of the rule of Texas is we want to continue to serve alcohol. So we all kind of want that to keep going, but that's a one-time $3,700 charge that's paid out to the state. Uh, restaurant supply and equipment, we did have to purchase some more banquet equipment as we did 300 plus person weddings this last month. And we've got at least three more going on this month. We needed plateware, we needed glassware, we needed flatware, we needed small wares, anything that has to do with wares at some point in time, uh, as well as linen for all the coverage for all these events, including uh, the two that we have today. And some deals that have been negotiated when we were a little bit slower included custom linens in order to book an event back in October when Ryan and the previous team were trying to book events and put money and put revenue on the books. Um, they negotiated some deals that we probably, as we scale and grow, won't be negotiating those kinds of things and or passing the expense off to the guests that they so choose to have satin linens or floor length linens or something along those lines. Um, we also had some equipment prepare. Uh, that we had to go and take care of. We had some burners go down, laptop go down, refrigerators go down, that kind of things happen, but we're also exploring preventative maintenance plans with some local suppliers to see what we can do to be proactive as we go into the summer and into the fall and have few companies come out on a quarterly basis as opposed to coming <laughs> just to fix something. It's a lot less costly, and then if they see it that month, they can correct it rather than when the machine goes down or the part goes down or whatever goes down. Uh, some things I did want to share with you guys that doesn't always get widely published because it's more comes across my desk than anyone else's. Um, we do have a review that people are more than welcome to take. It's on the bottom part of our chit. It's something which is your receipt that you get at the end of the meal. Um, there's a QR code that you can scan and provide accurate feedback to Kemper Sports. That is something that I'm working through my training with the new team members to utilize as a useful tool to explain to the guests how we can provide feedback in real time. Um, overall, though, we're at a 98 or 9.8 on the scale towards a, a 10 um, on the amount of surveys that we got just for May. So that's pretty impressive, in my opinion. Um, and then from Resi, which is our reservation standpoint that you see the hosts learning and trying to use. And sometimes if they inconvenience you, but they want to collect some information. It's also we can get relative data that's going to be applicable one year from now as we plan and budget and scale and grow. Um, and right now, out of the 32 reviews from May, we're averaging a 4.75 out of 5. So we're, in my opinion, on the right track from a review standpoint. Again, if any of you would like to learn a little more about that or how we can explain and use those tools, um, that's the best way I can build my team and get relative feedback other than receiving it myself and then giving it out throughout pre-shift, but also 
getting it on a long book and organizing and then tracking where we're going to go as far as improvements that we need to make. Uh, as far as activities and events to look forward to, the lounge is obviously going to be open Wednesday through Sunday, pending any events that we have going on. That's not going away. Um, we're looking to do weekend and weekday theme nights will continue. Wine Down Wednesday, we're also going to open with a board and bottle selection. So I'm going to pre-select a bottle of wine at a discounted rate and pair it with a uh, charcuterie board or charcuterie board. Charcuterie board. <laughs> I haven't had my coffee yet. I haven't had my coffee yet. Charcuterie board. We're going to pair it with a charcuterie board of uh, Chef Sean's pairing. So that'll be the first one will be this upcoming Wednesday. Um, that wasn't an ask. That's just something I've seen at restaurants that I think is kind of a cool concept. Uh, so kind of pairing a bottle and a board together. We're going to elevate the taco Thursday. I'm working with chef on what that exactly is going to mean. And then, like I said, we're going to do chef special every single Friday. Uh, could be fish, could be beef, it could be a stew, it could be a soup, it could be something, uh, pasta. So that's going to be between chef and Sean um, and myself to, to kind of figure out how we're going to execute something to bring some fun to Friday nights again. Brunch every Sunday. We'll continue with live music throughout this month. Um, I'm thinking about maybe if it's not horribly hot out, putting it out on the patio. We have pretty much from 11 to noon, our patio just fills up right away before the inside does. And the music's always on the inside. So the guy's playing to nobody for a little while until that fades out. I also don't want to put a musician out there until 2 p.m. if it's going to be 101 out um, with lakeside humidity. So we're trying to figure out uh, between musicians and myself what's a better mix. But last weekend, I saw that we could have probably benefited more from putting them outside uh, and then maybe try to figure out how we can run a wire and run a speaker to the inside so we can provide music to the inside and outside. Um, so that's something between me and our, our music guy that we're working through. Father's Day brunch will be a shrimp boil. The lounge will be open all day. Uh, margarita machine, poolside service. Uh, Father's Day is not as big of a holiday as Mother's Day, though we do forecast to see a lot of people out of the pool. It's going to be beautiful weather. Um, and that's, that's coming out here in a couple Sundays. Is it next Sunday? Next, next Sunday. Sunday. Can thank, I you, ask thank you, Fathers. Can, I ask you, can you run the hamburgers a little later? Yeah. yeah rather than start at because 11. It, yeah. Because uh, you got 11 to, what time was it? 11 to, two, to three, three. Two to three. But we had an event that night. So if we don't have an event in the lounge that night, I'll just keep it going until five or whatever. Yeah, because a lot of people at the pool, they were asking, what is the hamburger? Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and also to that credit, we learned a lot. That was our first Memorial Day opening the lounge and trying to do the burger and fry thing. I don't think I would keep it in the hot box again. I think that that wasn't the biggest win in our opinion. But that's, again, an operational standpoint that I'd rather provide fresher quality food but figure out the service piece of how we get it from point A to point B. Uh, but just know that that's going to happen also for 4th of July. Lounge will obviously be open as well um, from the morning starting at 11 a.m. And we'll provide serve food as well on that day. Uh, like I said, we have updated. And this is just my GM update to you all. Uh, service and training binder consistent with the expectation of a corporate restaurant. We hired 25 new people. We're currently at a 75% retention rate. So with any restaurant business, you're going to have turnover. You're going to have people that show up for a shift or two. It's not what they thought it was. Um, the important part was we were getting people in the door, which was a big struggle for us in the last month and a half. So to keep it at a 75% rate, I'm pretty happy with that. And the turnover that we have had were people that I was okay with losing. Um, we try to hold on to the good ones. And again, thank you all to, to being patient with the time it takes to train a new team. Um, but I think that you will see in time that these are going to become people of our community, just like I'm becoming a part of the community. They're going to become people that love to work here and um, love to provide service to all of you. Uniform standards have shown a dramatic improvement. That was a big focus of mine uh, when I came in the gate was making sure that everyone looked uniformed and it looked like a well-run restaurant. Uh, so we've seen a big improvement on that. And also the wine list got a, a pretty solid update. And the cocktail list is going to get a refreshment here probably in the next month or two. We've partnered with Specs Liquor, and they're going to bring out a mixologist to build, help us build some cocktails that fit the lakeside venue. Uh, but again, open to feedback if there's something you would like to see from a cocktail standpoint, cucumber martini perhaps, um, anything along those lines, uh, you feel free to let me know, and, and I'll absolutely take it into consideration. So with that, we'll also... oh. Last thing I forgot. We're participating in Taste of Chandler's too. So that's going to be kind of fun for us. That'll be my first that's year. What I was yeah. Um, that's going to be. Yeah. yeah. We're going to be participating in it as well. I'll be out there uh, promoting us and, and just chatting about it. I also look forward. It's my first ever Taste of Chandler's. So 
thank you guys for inviting me to that. Thank you. Um, that's about it from, from the TYC wrap up. So okay. any questions, things, concerns? No? Well, thank we'll you guys. We'll let you get on to the yeah, we're gonna go today. Yeah, we're going to go open yeah. and run that event. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, oh, thank, thank you. Fun. Thank you, guys. Oh. Bye, y'all. Bye. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Moving over to Bruce. Okay. <clears throat> just, just to put a, a wrap on the good news from Charles. <clears throat> we had $134,000 worth of revenue in the club in uh, May, and that's, that's the best month on the temporal. Uh, the expenses uh, produced a loss of $15,000, and we'd all prefer to see that at break even, but $15,000 in May was less than a quarter of the $60,000 that we ran up in April. So uh, we may or may not be turning the corner, Sounds like we are, but at least you could say that wherever we are, we can see the corner from here. Looking at the broader community, uh, which includes the finances from the club, uh, we were overspent $32,000 in May. We overspend for the five months year to date is $170,000. And that seems like a lot, and it is. But let me break down the details. We, we put over a quarter of a million dollars into paying for reconstruction invoices. In fact, it was $277,000. Uh, the way the accounting works, <clears throat> when we get reimbursed from uh, our bank loan for that, it doesn't go into the income statement. It goes into the balance sheet. So it shows up as cash. But basically, I'll wrap this point up, the way to look at it, if we hadn't spent that money for reconstruction expenses, and we're just about done with spending money for reconstruction invoices, we would have had a profit of over $100,000 in the community in the first five months of the year. So we're turning in that direction. Yeah. I'm sorry, we didn't have insurance when we had this um, fire in the Yeah, we did. We did? Did yeah. we get any money back? Yeah, we got, yeah, but that just paid for um, the electrical repairs. It was all electrical fire. So, oh. yeah, so 180000 dollars. So that all that did is replace all the all the electrical equipment that turned up. We got a that that piece of equipment was probably pretty much <coughs> original, if not original. Oh, it was, it was original. Switch yeah. boss, switch boss. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, I, I remember <coughs> when we were when we were going through that, we were getting uh, uh, advice from the community to go to Walmart and get a uh, uh, a breaker box. Mm -hmm. and, and there was not an understanding of the fact that this was something that's like the size of two refrigerators, not small. And and also that it took a long time to all custom make that. It's all high high voltage. It's not what's in your home. <coughs> so that that money went to that. It, it's a great question. I think it's worth pointing out. We were faced with this long period of downtime to take care of the fire repairs. And the decision was made: as long as we're down, why don't we solve some other problems? For example, we were out of compliance on the American Disability Act requirements, the elevator being one of those fixes. So we did a whole bunch of stuff to take advantage of the downtime. Is the elevator working? Yeah. 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 Oh. oh. I don't use it. Yeah. You should try it. It's fun. <laughs> oh, I just love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been working now for. Yeah. Three weeks. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay. Well, I've never seen anybody in and out. So, yeah. you know, it just goes up and down, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll try. Yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. What is this? Yeah. I'll try. <laughs> you good? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. 
All right, Chip, we're going to move over to you. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, we're going to go to team for management. Good morning. So, uh, just to highlight, we had 11 new property owners in May, and uh, we also installed the landline at both security and the HOA. Uh, we uh, switched to static IP. That was part of the problem when we were losing our phone. So, we will have a landline if we ever go through that issue again. We will be able to call security, and they'll be posted. Either on the marquee or on town square. So that was, and I did notice that my cell phone still has the message on it that says I'm CLCA. So I'm going to change that. I just noticed that last night. Uh, we had some storm damage, you know, and the blue herons uh, are uh, approximately two to four weeks from fledging. So at that point, there's an area down where for maintenance has kind of stayed away, and the pictures are beautiful. Of, uh, those uh, blue herons, and uh, thanks to City Shopping for sharing those. I've also had some notification of, like we do each year, of a bobcat at Mansell Park. So <coughs> as you're going through there, maybe just turn on the radio or if you're walking, uh, because uh, typically they will flee. And, um, but uh, that's a concern <laughs> sometimes for someone who's new to a neighborhood that does have wild life. So uh, we do continue right now to have some continual tree damage. A lot of it is uprooting uh, the root structure. So as you see those, please let us know. I know that um, there's an area behind Freedom right now, a very large tree that's down. And uh, they worked yesterday to cut away to kind of um, from the pathway and preparing how they start to remove that. So that's usually through, if maintenance can't handle it, uh, we'll use a arborist. So today I know probably there are residents that are out enjoying, uh, enjoying the garden tour. So looking forward to the garden tour today. That's from 10 till 2. Uh, there a, will be a concert at the pool on June 19th. On June 26th, we will have shredded service at the HOA from 10 till noon. So you'll be able to bring in the items that you want shredded and actually stay there while they're loaded um, into the truck. And that's until that, that uh, truck is full. And then the same day, uh, Taste of Chandler. So going forward after that, we have 4th of July with the bike and golf cart parade, a pool party, live music, and it looks like fireworks. Uh, looks like you guys, uh, fireworks on the Lake LLC was able to obtain the required insurance from the city of Dallas. And I'm sure we'll have more news about um, events that you guys will be preparing and hosting in the community. Uh, looking forward also to the communication committee return of the newsletter. And I know that Karen, our uh, board, board member, Karen Owen, that we're working with that group. And so we'll hear more about that. Um, my understanding is perhaps the sale program is going to be going forward. Uh, I talked with an insurance agent yesterday that was in the fireworks. And she's working with Roy Kuypers uh, to get the required insurance. So I'm thinking we'll hear more information on that next week. As far as the final audit update, uh, I did ask for an audit uh, update from their admin and that they have received the management rep letters back and have forward the signed attorney consent letters to the appropriate offices. The bank confirmations are in progress. And then once those are returned from the bank, and I should receive the final report. And that is for CLCA right now. Uh, elections are coming up in August, so you'll be looking for those dates to be posted. CLCA tax return was filed. Financials will be posted on Monday. And the TYC PPP loan forgiveness, we're on schedule now. Uh, they're going to open the portal on June 30th. So we'll be able to work through that. The HOA, the fence of the field that still has the yellow construction tape, we have we did finally locate the contractor that was able to locate the proper fence material. So that is has been ordered and should be repaired shortly. Uh, we're going to have some roof repairs. We have some storm damage at the HOA, water storm damage, and then helping hands is. Uh, Right now, starting to collect school supplies, so you'll see kind of a push for backpacks and school supplies. That's pretty much it. On the HOA. Thank you. Very much. Can I ask a question? And, and I only saw this because I saw a neighbor call 911. 
I actually tried many, many times and couldn't get the call to go through. I know, I don't know if this has anything to do with this, but we all have horrible phone issues. Is there any, any? Yeah. Idea? So, so, <laughs> yeah, there's a couple of things going on with cell towers. There's, there's four or five cell towers on the south side of the rock wall, and two of them have been down for, I think, the better part of a year. Uh, and so that's been a big part of it. But then also, we go through seasonality with leaves on trees, not leaves on trees, and with all the topography in the neighborhood, there's just some pockets of the neighborhood that are always going to experience some, some challenges. The I'm aware of the 911 aspect. That is obviously nothing that we can control, but I have a couple <clears throat> pieces of information so we're all on the same page, and maybe a suggestion on how to handle an emergency call. Uh, what happens when you dial 911 is you get sent to Dallas. And then Dallas says, oh, we need to send you to Rockwall. This is the pattern. This is how they do it. So then they send it to Rockwall. So there was an emergency situation this last week, and it took uh, more than six minutes to get someone on the phone. And they were hung up on at least once, maybe twice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a horrible situation. Uh, what everyone should do is have a non-emergency number for Rockwall PD in their phone so that you can call them uh, directly in that kind of situation. If your first attempt at 911 is a failure like that, don't keep trying that, just call. There, there's also a couple other things you can do, compliments of Ben Northcutt. Uh, this little, if you have, I don't know how it is on an Android phone, but on, on an Apple device, you can actually go in and set it to use your, to make a Wi-Fi call. Uh, and when you do that, when you make that setup, it also asks you to confirm your address uh, in there, and that will help. For example, a uh, few times I've had to call 911 uh, from our street. We actually, it connects to Darwin, and then Darwin has to transfer the call back to Rockwell. So um, that's with the poor cell service, you, you can make calls over your home Wi Fi. And that um, does provide you with a um, typically a better connection. So, but but some of these towers are in, as I understand it, in 5G upgrade mode. They've been that way for a year, uh, and also the time of day uh, uh, also predicates the cell signal. Um, so, if you're up early in the morning, signal is way better than it is during the middle of the day. So, there's less people on. Um, not emergency numbers. Yeah, that's an awesome idea. Yeah. 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 yeah, But there has been also some uh, <clears throat> uh, if you sub subscribe to Rockwall emergency uh, text. <coughs> Excuse me. There has been some nine one one issues with the uh, uh, call the nine one one call center in Rockwall County this last month. There were two times. Ago. <clears throat> okay. Um, that moves on to you, Chip, for uh, security and construction. Okay. Uh, well, Evan kind of covered some of it. So we've had some late night, uh, just call them shenanigans, uh, <clears throat> and uh, some vandalism. So this is probably not the correct audience in here, but maybe some of you at home listening is don't really think teenagers should be out at 2 a.m. in the morning. Um, and parents, do you know where your kids are? Okay. So um, there is no curfew anymore in Rockwall. Uh, so it's not illegal to be out, but I don't think it's actually a uh, good thing to be out at that hour, and especially out causing problems. Um, we are averaging over 500, still over 500 vehicles a day through the visitors, uh, the main visitors gate. Uh, so uh, that takes some time and still again, I make my plea, if you're a resident here, please get it. If you're not gonna get a toll tag, uh, then at least put a resident sticker on because it does speed the process up. So uh, we're also looking at some other alternatives for those that don't, have toll tags, which is a little bit of a head scratcher, uh, how you navigate the BFW area anymore. But 
Uh, we're also looking at some other uh, devices that interact with our readers uh, that we may be able to, to sell or uh, to residents on a one time fee to hook in. So we're, we're taking a look at that. Uh, security is uh, like anywhere else, they're having some short staff. Uh, so there's some other time that's not at our expense there to cover the ships. Uh, a couple of construction updates here. We um, uh, had all get the plumbers in to redo all the condensate lines on the rooftop units. So we no longer have uh, water running over the side of the building in the back or down uh, into the gutter, into the drain shutters, uh, condensate water out of HPA systems. HPAC system is very acidic, and uh, so we took care of that. Uh, we'll be having uh, a door installed probably in the next uh, week or 10 days at the opening of the breezeway so that it's exit only. Uh, so this will help uh, Chaz and his team control uh, uh, going on the patio just from a service standpoint. So we're working on that. Uh, I'll be meeting with an electrician on uh, Monday for uh, uh, lighting for the handicapped parking uh, spaces. So it's obviously very dark there right now. So we're working on that. On Monday, uh, weather permitting, the entire parking lot will be restriped. So we'll actually have lines to try and put our cars between uh, the park, not just guests. And uh, let's see, I think that's all I have for uh, that. And then one other non uh, yacht club related construction is uh, you probably paid any attention. We have quite a bit of markings on the street. So we had <clears throat> previously last fall approved. Uh, street repairs, those will be starting, I would think, in the next week to 10 days. Some of them, especially uh, on the north side of the community, uh, Mayflower, uh, Australia, Yacht Club in there, they're going to be pretty extensive. Uh, so there will be Wayne, well, major, actually, will be taking out uh, along between Easterner. And uh, going up the hill from Easton, there we'll be taking out both, not at one time, but we'll be replacing panels on both sides of the road there. So they'll we'll be able to be nice to our neighbors and try to drive through there. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that when that gets started. So they'll they'll cut out all the uh, areas for repair first, and then come in and form uh, as they work through. And I think that's all. All right. There is no new business um, I'm aware of, so we will move on to full business, uh, which is the tennis support retaining wall. That's the one that looks so bad out here in between the upper <laughs> and middle tennis courts um, that has a couple ties that are now kind of uh, falling down on, onto the lower space. Uh, we have approved uh, for that to be redone, and we are waiting for um, Final survey on that, or actually putting out the the posts with tape on them, and and then also the uh, the uh, contractor on that is working through the engineering uh, reports to get that done. So that would be the next step um, on that, and then we'll probably be moving into uh, there's a lot of work that is needed in that what I'll call the tennis court corridor. That kind of is up from the cabanas all the way down to the lake. We've got drainage, sidewalks, lighting, irrigation, uh, retaining walls, um, and then also kind of sitting areas. So, looking at possibly doing a master plan for that whole space so that um, through the years, as we tackle the different uh, projects, as we have money available for it that the end result when it's all done will be cohesive instead of kind of patchwork together by different boards um, or different contractors. So it'd be good to have a master plan to make sure that that ends up looking like it was intended and done all at once, uh, even if it's not. So that's a big part of it as well. Um, 
we need to do anything. So yeah, moving forward on that. Um, that takes us to owner visitor forum. Two. Name and address. How are you here? Okay. I just want to thank Bruce for helping us deal with our neighbors. Hot mess of the yard is finally done every now and then. We appreciate <coughs> since Jimmy passed, it has been a nightmare. It's not fun to look at if we're like this. We need all our yards nice. So I appreciate your help with that. Uh, for the wedding venue area here, are we going to talk them into doing the drainage just a little better? Yeah, that's so. So, so the yeah, the contractor that's doing that wall. Uh, he he's a good guy. As soon as he gets us, like, he's coming back to to this. We're going to work on that. So there's there's a very big fix, and then there's smaller fixes that will probably get us ninety percent of the way there. So depending on finances and whatnot. And also I failed to mention we're actually building a fence uh, along the back of the building there. Uh, I probably send a post to try the um, service doors for the uh, mechanical rooms. Uh, the city requires um, certain signage uh, which is rather utilitarian on those doors and it doesn't look good apparently doesn't look good in wedding photos either so <laughs> um, <laughs> from over here so uh so we're we're putting a nice uh, fence along there so we'll that and then we'll be also um replacing the fence at the top along where the uh where the driveway is to the uh, dock that we took out because of the fire. So that'll be going in and back in in the next few weeks. So we'll be updating that too and making some changes in some of the uh, landscaping along there as, as we have uh, staff available to do that in house. All right. Yes, sir. Uh, Russ Martin, 5601 Ranger. Speaking of things that don't look so good, they Coming up to the front door of the club, the divider where the drop off area is, that's the nastiest water, stagnant, moss, mud. A simple solution is obvious just dig that out, put rocks in, put a couple of BFRs on each end, and then and go well, And that's not expensive, but could we do yeah, something? can't do anything with that until we get the port in shape, which is also, uh, will be the rest of it will be torn down and replaced. So it's not. Um, we we have an insurance check for that, so once we'll address all that when we um, replace the court issue. Is, is the item going to stay there to divide the? Well, it has to yeah. because there there's two posts that have to go in that aisle. Rocks are there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so it's always going to be run over by somebody, right. like delivery. But the yes. uh, but the new <laughs> <laughs> the new one will have it. Oh, of the new one will have something so that. Hopefully they get it before get that and stuff. Yeah. The, the new design is going to look pretty cool. It's going to be uh, even, further, <laughs> even further elevated from what we currently have. So, and the insurance money and and that's all being done for in years. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. We appreciate it. We'll put, thank you. Compliments of the craft beer. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? All right. 